Up ahead, Tadlock Elementary uses a Disney movie to put a unique twist in their daily routine. And hospitality and tourism drives its future through food truck creations. All this and more coming up on Frisco ISD TV. Welcome to this episode of Frisco ISD TV. I'm Kyle Bradford. And I'm Jillian Kenless. Thanks for joining us. Today we'll kick it off with Maddie Cargo as she expresses emotions at Tadlock in It's Elementary, my dear. Students at Tadlock Elementary are turning their emotions inside out with a new way to measure self-awareness. And what's your zone right now? Um, green. And why? Because um, I get to play with my friends at recess. We came up with the zones of regulation, which is actually a, a curriculum um, that is to help with emotional literacy. Every morning when they come in, before they walk into the classroom, they choose what zone they're in, and that helps the teacher to see how they're feeling. Whether yellow, green, red, or blue, students see benefits in sharing their zones. I think it helps me by letting my teacher know how I feel and how she can help me. It just helps me to tell my teacher how I feel at the end of the day. So if anyone I need help, um, other people can help. Tools are provided to help students work through their feelings. Teacher Chi Win shares what's available for the red zone. And I have a little box and a couple of things we put in there as markers and we put a little blank sheet of paper and then um, there's a, a, a little timer and, and we and played out and we, we made those together so that they felt empowered by it and that it was theirs and that they could go to it whenever they felt frustrated and we've already used it a couple times this morning so I'm really excited about that. We want to build up their toolbox so that they have the skills to be able to know that I'm in the red zone and how do I get back to the green zone. So basically if I am really upset, how am I going to get back to calm so that my brain can focus and I can um, get back to learning. Counselor Sarah Perry sees the program as a way to involve the entire school in caring for themselves and each other. They are building that emotional um, literacy, that vocabulary to be able to express themselves in a more appropriate way. I think it's amazing for 700 kids to be able to identify with each other how it is that they're feeling um, and then be able to understand the other people around them and how they're feeling. It creates a better sense of community and it also helps with empathy and understanding for other people knowing that if my friend is in the blue zone then I need to give them a little bit more space. They're sad. Let's talk about why they're sad and what we can do to help them. Hopefully putting their feelings on display will help these students better manage their lives. I'm Maddie Cargill for Frisco ISD TV. Thanks Maddie. Watching this piece sure put me in the green zone. I definitely agree. Schools are getting more and more creative each day. Vendor Vendor Middle School students even make toys for kids at the early childhood school. Mari Forbes has the story in the middle of it all. Engineering students at Vendor Vendor Middle School bring their imagination to life through the power of play. We're working on a project to help the kids who are differently abled at the early childhood center here in Frisco, specifically those who have cerebral palsy from ages three to five, and we're making uh, toys for them so that they can further improve their physical and occupational skills. And so it help them work their like fine motor skills and stuff, so then they can do day-to-day -day activities just like us. As the final project for their design and modeling class, these seventh and eighth graders got into groups to design toys for the youngest students in the district. 
this curriculum comes from a, a company, Project Lead the Way, and so this was their culminating activity. They've done all kinds of activities that deal with modifying toys with students with cerebral palsy, and so we've learned all the different design process and everything that goes into the design process, and so now this is their final culminating project where they use everything that they've learned over the past 15 weeks and they're putting it all into this project. During the design process, as students are faced with challenges, they work to find solutions. For us, we're making a piano, so we, it's hard for us to figure out how to make sounds and everything and to make it appeal to the kids. So we added a different modifications to make it like interesting and fun while still learning how to do movement. The engineers hope the final products bring joy. The colors that we incorporated into it and the design and the throwing part, I guess. The noises when it like hits the edges and like have them enjoying the toy. My favorite project would probably be seeing the kids playing the toys. My favorite part is being with the kids and talking to the cerebral palsy kids. I don't want them to feel bullied or different just because of their disabilities. These students creatively provided students at the early childhood school with an opportunity to have fun with new toys. I'm Mari Forbes for Frisco ISD TV. Thanks, Mari. In Higher Learning, Kennedy McGilvery tells us the story of two track stars who've raced through their careers together since childhood. My dad asked me when I was in the eighth grade, do you want to be good or do you want to be great? Realizing like what that actually meant to go from just being like your average, like, ooh, I ran high school track to being like, I'm a top recruit out of high school. That was the biggest thing. From elementary to high school, all the way to state, Briscoe High has two athletes dominating the lanes. As like young kids, we were like super, super fast. We just met through track. I started running track because of my father. He noticed when I was little that I was a fast crawler and like every track dad thought I was the fastest baby in the whole entire world. Whitney and Simone met as eight-year-old runners in the track club Frisco Heat. This long-lasting friendship has benefited them in many ways. I know that she understands what it takes to be a phenomenal top athlete and we're able to be there for each other and talk about it, so that part's nice. Even through a torn ACL. She helped me through like my therapy and like telling me like everything's gonna be okay, you're gonna come back. Their success hasn't always come easy. There's a lot of Things that can get distract you with anything, uh, media, friends, other people's success. But if you focus on what you can control, you keep the main thing the main thing. Focus on diet, sleep, eating. You'll get the results that you want. When I tore my ACL, it really like downed my spirit, I guess. And so it just made me like work harder. Even though like I couldn't walk or run, my hard work and like dedication to the sport like helped me get back to running, so I just feel like it's an overall like life lesson. They have moments they're proud of. My ninth grade year, I got second at this big indoor meet called Great Southwest. It was big because I finally got out of my head. For me, the hardest part about track is the mental side, so that was like my breakthrough moment, and then winning state two times. It was my freshman year when I won state. No one really thinks like freshman's gonna be like, oh, this fast, and they're gonna go and win stay over all the seniors. So I think that was like one of my like proudest moments. After high school, Simone will continue on to Texas Tech University and Whitney has committed to Southern Methodist University. They also plan to compete on the world stage. I really wanna sign pro. I wanna go to the Olympics. So whatever whatever happens, that's, that's the goal. Are we going to the Olympics? We're going to world championships. We're uh, signing a deal with Nike. I'm going to be a, a movie star, a superstar. The legacy these girls leave behind will forever be inscribed on these walls. Simone being the number one 5A hurdler in the state for 300 and 100 meter hurdles, and Whitney going for the gold as the state's second place 400 meter runner. Whitney Williams and Simone Watkins are leaving their legacy not only on the walls of Frisco High, but the memories they leave behind. I'm Kennedy McGilvery for Frisco ISD. TV. It's so nice to see the two of them keep each other on track throughout their lives. Here's Jared Gonzalez Yap with a story on food truck creations and high tech happenings. Feel a little hungry? Survey of Hospitality and Tourism gets things rolling to satisfy their appetites. 
Well, this is the survey of hospitality and tourism class, and the students have been covering different uh, industries within the pathway. This particular unit was over the food and beverage industry. Then we started talking about the trends in the uh, hospitality industry with the new food truck. So I gave them a challenge on creating their very own food truck company by creating their very own restaurant on wheels. Students teamed up and created their own unique designs, building replicas out of shoe boxes, cardboard, and other craft items. Some went beyond traditional menus, offering a diversity of food to go. We're serving mini tacos and we chose it because of my last name. We, our food truck name is called Nom Nom, so we just thought like mini tacos is like a cute thing to like make. We serve all kinds of food, but the one thing that remains consistent is bacon. Uh, coffee and pastries. Our food truck serves ice cream and desserts that are like sweet. The road wasn't always smooth and took some flexibility to get things moving. Well, the first thing that we did was we had to get the basic frame of the food truck, which was just kind of like everybody else's, but then it took Daniel and Dylan's perspectives too with the design and just being original and creative was the main part of it because we wanted to stand out in front of everybody. Time execution was a big issue because we had these big ideas but we didn't know exactly how to get it done in time. So we had to kind of downsize what we were thinking. This project gave them food for thought on future possibilities. They wouldn't work in the restaurant industry or the hotel industry or even on uh, having a very own food truck. It's something that's definitely possible, specifically because it's significantly cheaper than owning your own brick and mortar restaurant. But it gives them an idea to see that, hey, you know, the, the management side and the owner and operating side of uh, hospitality is something that's also in their corner as well. I'm Jared gonzalez Yap for Frisco ISD TV. Thanks, Jared. Living in North Texas is definitely a unique experience. Jake Steele shows us how the sports industry uses it to their advantage. Sports professionals and others interested in the industry gather to discuss the appeal and potential of opportunities in North Texas. Larry asked me to come and, and talk a little bit about uh, sports tourism and having done it for a little over a decade, uh, want to kind of spread the gospel of what sports tourism is and get more people uh, seeing that as a career path, um, as a way to stay in sports and be around sports that doesn't necessarily mean you have to work for a professional sports organization or anything like that. Black sports professionals of North Texas, also known as BSP, may be the ticket to having a better understanding of the market. We're with our uh, black sports professional group and we want to expose all of our members to the best and brightest in Dallas sports community. And Monica Paul, the Sports Commission, they're charged with growing sports and bringing the best events to North Texas. And we're very proud of that. But if people don't know what the opportunities are, they can't pursue them. So we partnered with Monica to host this event to educate our members on opportunities in the sports community, sports tourism, and also the best events in Dallas and North Texas. The Black Sports Professionals North Texas is an organization instituted um, at the grassroots level nationally, but here in Dallas we have a pretty active organization where we try to meet um, monthly um, with other African American sports professionals in the Dallas Metroplex. And really our goal is to help build relationships, um, networking across different organizations, um, pro, collegiate, with the goal of helping diversify our front offices. The leaders whose names echo throughout North Texas were crucial to how the event played out. If you were anywhere in the nation, you have some of the best and brightest. You have Cheryl Richards from the Dallas Convention Visitors Bureau, a longtime veteran of bringing sports and promoting uh, convention business and bringing business to the Dallas community. You have Monica Paul with the Sports Commission and you have Josh Deal from Visit Frisco. And everything that's going on with the Cowboys, the Star, these people are responsible for not only what's currently here, but what's going to be coming here the next five to ten years. North Texas has established itself as a hub for players and those who watch. As far as Dallas itself and, and te Texas itself, it is, it is one of the hotbeds of, of sport in America. A very progressive, uh, a lot of great things going on here. Uh, a lot of very passionate people, um, starting right from uh, right from school sports through college sports and into into, into pro sports. So it's it's a great place to come if, if 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 you're interested in being in this in this market in this environment. I think uh, there's a lot to say and talk about in terms of sports in North Texas uh, that really benefits uh, all of our cities from Dallas to Frisco to Arlington to Fort Worth to Allen McKinney, uh, and I think that our industry, from a sports tourism industry and a sports commission industry and a CVB industry is sometimes uh, unknown in terms of what we do to 
bring events to the city and how that benefits in terms of incremental tax dollars that we're bringing to the city. So we feel that this is a gr great opportunity to further explain what we do and the benefit uh, of the great sports that we bring here. Events like these that provide exposure may continue to be a hit as the market grows with a variety of sports for fans to choose from. I'm Jake Steele for Frisco ISD TV. That's all for this episode of Frisco ISD TV. Join us next time to see middle schoolers write their own checks. And where parents come together to make music. I'm Kyle Bradford. And I'm Jillian Kenlas. Thanks for watching.